I'm Professor of Vascular Biology at St George's University, working in the Institute of Cardiovascular Sciences and Cell Sciences. Our main interests in research are understanding how high-density lipoproteins can be atheroprotective. Well, that's um, quite a good question. And just to paraphrase it, um, what I would like to tell you about are the inflammatory pathways that have currently been investigated at the molecular level with regards to how efficient high-density lipoproteins can be at ablating or reducing inflammation in diseases. Uh, currently, there's an awful lot of data on raising HDL as being protective in sepsis. So the pathways of inflammation that are elicited in sepsis are very well characterized and, and there's a lot of molecular analysis uh, information that we have on the way HDL interferes with the uh, binding of LPS to C CD14 on monocytes uh, and endothelium. And another pathway that has been uh, looked at with regards to HDL, which is a common pathway of many diseases, is the ability of high-density lipoprotein to inhibit uh, cytokine-induced adhesion molecules on endothelial cells and so prevent monocyte uh, adhesion and inflammation through those pathways. And there are common cellular inflammatory pathways that are found in the etiology of a number of, of diseases. The cholesterol ester transfer protein inhibitor class of drugs have thus far given unimpressive results. They're supposedly able to raise high density life protein and some have the ability to also lower low density life proteins. Now so far the drugs tested which have significant high density lipoprotein raising uh, abilities um, have given very negative results in clinical trials where they've been used to look at the improvement in acute coronary syndrome patients. And it may be that the ability of this drug to raise the production of high density lipoprotein is not overcoming the ability of that high density lipoprotein then to become um, affected by the factors that are involved in the inflammatory scenario of a chronic condition. We know that chronic disease alters the status of high density lipoproteins and has been shown to be able to modify high density lipoprotein, lipoprotein from protective to almost protagonistic. So in a, an acute coronary syndrome patient the high density lipoprotein is no longer anti-inflammatory. It's its complexity is adjusted in interacting with other lipoproteins and cell membranes and results in a particle which is pro-inflammatory or at least not anti-inflammatory. So perhaps the actual hypothesis is somewhat naive in that raising HDL alone is the way to go. What we need to do is to find out what what is the mechanism of raising HDL that is protective rather than to simply raise HDL globally with these treatments. Um, currently, there remains two, uh, two products in market under trial, Evacetropib and Anacetropib, and they're due to report either this year or next year. But both those drugs not only have HDL raising abilities, but they have LDL lowering abilities in addition. And so benefits may come from further lowering of, of low density like protein, but nevertheless it will be interesting to see what happens to the, the heterogeneity and the complexity of HDLs in those patients treated with the drug. <laughs> 